It's three um, more days before this whole process ends. What can Canadian youth and Canadian citizens do to affect this process? I mean, to affect this process in, in the short term, you know, unfortunately we have a government that's um, you know, deeply, deeply invested in maintaining the status quo when it comes to expanding dirty energy industries like the tar sands. So, uh, although there's a chance for a, a statement to be made at these, these, these negotiations, especially by um, countries from the global south and, and the most impacted countries, I'd say that sort of, if we're trying to impact this, that pledging, you know, making statements to support, whether it's by social media or things like that, to those countries to be able to stand up against Canada and say that the people of these countries stand with those, with those countries being most impacted and against our own, you know, the actions of our negotiators here. Um, but I think what's really important is to get involved after this, you know. Oftentimes we say that it's not where we are on December 10th that matters so much, it's how many people we've inspired by January 1st, because every year we need to build this and build it stronger. And this is a growing movement. Um, we've seen it grow, especially across North America, drastically over the last year with the uh, anti-Keystone XL work in the United States, with the anti-tar sands movement in Canada rapidly expanding, people willing, being willing to put their you know bodies and their futures on the line through civil disobedience. And I think what we're going to need to see over the coming years is an increase in that um, and a drastic increase in, in just the size of this movement and the people that are standing up and saying that this government does not speak on our behalf and that when it comes to climate change, they're representing the interests of polluters and not the people of Canada. I think there was a lawsuit just launched, I think it was on the 30th.